Hey, God bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video. I know that God is going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. Every Christian needs to stay away from this sin. So make sure you pay attention to this video. Watch it the whole way through. I know that God is going to speak to your life. And do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if this video speaks to your life, press that like button because the more people that press that like button, the more people this video will reach. And that's what it's all about reaching people for the honor and the glory of Jesus Christ. So let's jump right into it. Remember, every Christian needs to stay away from this sin. So remember, what's the theme of today's video? The worst sin every Christian needs to stay away from. I know this video is going to speak to your life. And I want to read you a scripture. Look what the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 10. And we're going to open up with this. Look what the Bible says. If we say, now remember, the Bible is not written to sinners. The Bible is written to saved people. Because the Bible says that people who are not saved just read the Bible carnally minded. They don't understand it. The Bible says that the carnal mind cannot understand the word of God. It needs to be spiritually understood. In other words, only the Holy Spirit can interpret and reveal. You can read it, but only the Holy Spirit can reveal what the Bible really means. So right here, this is not written to sinners. This is written to Christians. And look what the Bible says to Christians. If we say we have no sin, if Christians say they have no sin, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Christians deceive themselves if they say they have no sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Remember, Jesus is the truth and the Bible says that the truth will set you free. If we confess our sins, who? Christians. If we confess our sins, he is faithful, God. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He'll forgive Christians their sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As Christians, there needs to be confession of sins to God. There needs to be repentance to God. The Bible says if you say as a Christian, if you say, no, I'm good. I have no sins. You know, I'm flawless. The Bible says you are lying. And look what the Bible says. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So look what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying this. If you say you have no sin, you're calling God a liar to Christians. The book of 1 John chapter 1 is written to Christians. And it is a Christian, John, writing it. And you notice where he said, if we say. He's including himself that in that verse. If we say we have no sins. We are calling him a liar. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to wash us of our sins. So John is putting himself in that scripture and John is talking about Christians. As Christians, we need to confess and repent of our sins. And the Bible says that as a Christian, if you don't confess your sins and repent of your sins, you are calling God a liar. So what is the worst sin that every Christian needs to stay away from? Now this sin, people in the Bible died because of this sin. What is it? When the Holy Spirit convicts them, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, and we do not confess our sins to God, we do not repent. And I want to read you a story in the Bible of two people, a man and a woman, a husband and wife, as a matter of fact, in the book of Acts. And they were two people that fell into the sin. And as a matter of fact, they're the ones that inspired this whole teaching. And because of their sin, because they did not confess their sins to God, even though the Holy Spirit was convicting them, even though Peter already knew their sins, they still lied and they still hid their sins. The Bible says that this man and this woman, they both died. So pay attention to this verse. I know that it's going to speak to your life. Now, we might not die physically nowadays, but believe me when I say there's a lot of Christians who are dying spiritually because the Holy Spirit is convicting them. The Holy Spirit is speaking to them. The Holy Spirit is revealing, bringing their sin out to the light. God might even use other people, certain people to reveal those things in their heart, in their hearts and in their life. God might use preachings. God might use preachers. God might use friends, family. God might even use a random person to speak to you and to try to get you to confess your sins to him. Why does God want you to confess your sins to him? Because when you confess your sins to God, the Bible says he's faithful and just. He'll forgive you and he'll wash you. 
But if we say we have no sin, the Bible says that we are calling God a liar. So look at this story. It's in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. Remember these names, Ananias and Sapphira. Let's look at the worst sin every Christian needs to stay away from. And that sin is the sin of lying to the Holy Spirit. When a person tries to hide their sins and not confess them to God, that is the worst sin every Christian needs to stay away from. Why? Because an unconfessed sin is an unforgiven sin. There's no sin that God will not forgive in your life. There's no sin that God will not forgive in any Christian's life if they confess it, if they repent of it genuinely. There's no sin that God won't forgive. But if a person never repents, how is God going to forgive that sin? That's why that is the worst sin that every Christian needs to stay away from. The sin of lying to God. The sin of keeping their sins secret. Don't do that. The Bible says he'll forgive you. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. So let's read what the Bible says. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. We're talking about Ananias and Sapphira. Now, this is after Jesus has already ascended into heaven. He's already been crucified. He's already been on earth 40 days. He's already ascended. So in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit is already descending on earth and God is doing great and mighty things, right? So the church is being developed. The church is growing. People are being added to the church every single day. There's something beautiful going on, a beautiful fellowship, genuine fellowship. There's no lying. There's no conniving. There's no hypocrisy. People are flowing in the love of God. But then Ananias and Sapphira, they're two people that lie to the Holy Spirit. And look what happens here. But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. Now, the reason they sold a piece of property, let me just give you a little context so you can understand it better, was because a lot of people were selling houses and land, and the money that they received, they were giving it to the apostles so that the apostles can distribute it to people who were in need. Now, Ananias and Sapphira wanted to join into that, but they were joining into it with lying. They weren't doing it the whole way. So they sell a piece of land, but they keep some of the money. But that was their business. They could have kept all the money and God would have been okay with it. But the problem was that they lied to the Holy Spirit. And let's read what I'm talking about. But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, in other words, they were both conniving, they were both scheming to lie against the Holy Spirit. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But look at this, look at the Holy Spirit. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Can I tell you something? When a Christian is not confessing their sins, we're not lying to anyone else but to God. You're not lying to your spouse. You're not lying to your parents. You're not lying to a friend. The only person you're lying to, you're not even lying to yourself. You're lying to God. And that's the worst person to lie to because he knows all things already. God already knows all things. Why are you going to lie to God? Why is any Christian going to lie to God? No Christian should lie to God. He already knows all things. So look what the Bible says. He says, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself a part of the proceeds of the Lamb? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. Look what Peter's telling Ananias. He's saying, Ananias, look, the money was yours. Your land was yours. The money after you sold it was yours. He says, when you had the money in your hand, you did not need to give that to us. But why did you choose to join in this lie? Why did you choose to get in this lie? You have not lied to man, but you have lied to God. And I want you to understand that. The worst sin every Christian needs to stay away from is lying to God. He already knows all your sins. There's no need to hide your sins. There's no need to have an unconfessed, unrepented sin towards God. Confess your sins to God. Repent of your sins. He'll forgive you. He already knows it's there, but he needs you to acknowledge it. People might ask, well, if God already knows it's there, then how come he just won't forgive me? Because he wants you to humble yourself. Because the Bible says that the humble will be exalted, but the prideful will be brought low. God wants you to humble yourself. That's what it's all about. What was the first sin ever in this universe? Pride. Satan. Before he was Satan, he was an angel in heaven. And one day he said, I can be like the Most High. I can be like God. I can ascend above the clouds. What was that? Pride. 
What was the first sin in this universe? Pride. What was the sin that casted Satan down from heaven? Pride. What is the sin that destroys a lot of Christians' spiritual lives? Pride. God already knows it's there. There's no reason to lie to God. There's no reason to keep it secret. There's no reason to keep it unconfessed, unrepented. Humble yourself and God will forgive you. God will wash you. God will cleanse you. And that what Peter's telling Ananias, saying, Ananias, why did you lie? You didn't need to even give us the money. Ananias, you didn't lie to me. You lied to the Holy Spirit. And look what the Bible keeps saying. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. What happened? Died. And a great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. So Ananias, the husband, had already died because he lied to the Holy Spirit. His wife, Sapphira, came in three hours later. She didn't know anything that happened, but I want you to see something. God has given Sapphira a grace time, a grace period. She doesn't know what happened. She knows the lie. Her and, her and Ananias joined together to lie to the Holy Spirit. But God is about to give her an opportunity to confess her sins to him. God is about to give her an opportunity to repent of her sins. Look what happens. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much she lied to. The Holy Spirit gave her an opportunity. God gave her a chance to repent. But she rejected it and she lied to God. The worst sin every Christian needs to stay away from is being prideful and lying to God. First John chapter 1 says, if we say we have no sin, we are calling God a liar and the truth is not in us. Sapphira came in three hours later and she lied to the Holy Spirit. But I want you to see how good God is. God gave her an opportunity to repent of her sins, but she rejected that opportunity and look what happened to her. But Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the Holy Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. She died also. When the young men came in, they found her dead and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard these things. So what happened? The Bible says that when people heard what happened to Ananias and Sapphira, great fear came upon them. You know what they said? I don't want to be like Ananias. I don't want to be like Sapphira. I don't want to lie to the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. Let's learn from Ananias and Sapphira. Now, we probably won't die physically like they did. But when a Christian doesn't confess their sins to God, doesn't repent of their sins to God, because remember, there's a blessing when you confess your sins. God wants to forgive you. God wants to wash you. God wants to restore you. God wants to raise you up. When you confess your sins, there's a blessing in that. God will exalt you, strengthen you. God will continue to make you go forward, continue to walk with you. But when a person does what Ananias and Sapphira did, and they lie to the Holy Spirit, because God already knows it's there, and they lie to the Holy Spirit, and they reject His grace, they might not die physically like Ananias and Sapphira, but spiritually, spiritually, they begin to decay slowly but surely. And let me tell you something. King David already told us in the book of Psalms what happens when a person doesn't confess their sins. King David said this, when he had sinned with Bathsheba and committed adultery, he said, while I didn't confess my sins, he says, God, your hand was heavy upon me. My bones wasted away all the day long, like if I was in the heat of summer. He says, but when I confess my sins, you forgave me, you cleansed me, you've removed all iniquity from my life. Let me tell you something. Don't do what Ananias and Sapphira did. They both agreed to lie to the Holy Spirit. Don't agree with your own conscience. Don't agree with your conscience, with your own mind, with your own reasoning. Don't agree to lie to God. He already knows what's in our life. Let's confess our sins to Him. Let's repent. There's a blessing in that. The Bible says, blessed is the person who God forgives their sins. Blessed is the person who God does not count their iniquity against them. Let me tell you something. In the Bible, God forgave people who committed adultery. In the Bible, God forgave liars. In the Bible, God forgave all types of people who did all types of sins because they confessed their sins to God. They approached Him and they humbled themselves. Humble yourself in the presence of God. He'll forgive you. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. Remember, He'll cleanse you of all your sins when you confess Him. 
I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor, press that subscribe button, press that bell notification so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, press that like button. The more people that press that like button, the more people this video will reach. And that's what it's all about, reaching people for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing.